All right, folks, if you look at that sign right there, you're at Kicking Horse Monarch. That exit in the mountains. So you exit out, head towards Kicking Horse or Monarch. What you're going to see is that a dump station. So if you need to, let's just say, do a dump, you're on the way, you got to do a dump. You do it here. I want to show you something. My RV's there. And if you look, my plumbing right there, my plumbing's on the side. So what you want to do is keep your RV plumbing on that side because that's where the sewer hole is. The sewer hole is. That is probably water you don't want to touch, but that is a dump station. If you look here, it says danger, not potable water because that's the, the black rinse right there. Right there in the back is potable water. Let me go closer. There's also a little garbage can here. That is the potable water right there. So you move forward, get your hose out, refill your water, and then off you go. This is quite a nice dump station, tucked in the middle of nowhere. So if you need one, this is where you can go. Well, there's no ladder right now, but there might be later because Kicking Horse is right there and so is Monarch. It's beside two campgrounds. So right now it's not busy, but I'm assuming it's busy during busy times. Right now it's fall, so it's not really peak season. First things first, roll up your sleeves. Put on gloves. I'm doing this on purpose here. I'm showing you a white t-shirt here for a dump, right? I'm going to show you how you do this clean. If, I'm not, if I don't do it clean, you'll see brown stuff on my shirt. So if my shirt is still white by the end of this session, it means I did it clean. So I'm going to show you how to do it. Here is the dump station. There is the sewer pipe. And there is the valve. Can you turn to the valve, please? I'm going to open the valve. You want to use gloves, like I said. And that's just the weight. Open the valve. That's now the sewer. All right. Where's the hose? Take the hose out. Nice and slow. Slow. Put the hose in there. And your valve right here. I misjudged the distance. So what I'm gonna do is stretch it. So this one, you unscrew. There you go. It's a bit of a stretch. But Tight. Okay, now that's in, that's in. What you could use is that rock from earlier to weigh the hose down so it doesn't fly away. So normally there's like a rock of some sort. It's for this, to weigh the hose down, okay? Just weigh it down, all right? So I'm gonna pull the black tank first. This is the black tank. So that's the black tank, okay. right there. And that's the gray tank. You can tell by the size of the pipe. So one and a half inch pipe, that's a three inch pipe, all right? So I'm gonna pull the black tank now. You're gonna hear everything gush. You have to back up. I'm pulling it right now. Black tank, making sure it's tight. Pull the black tank. So that's all the sewage going away. So I'm just waiting. And has her nose plugged, but I don't smell anything. Look, watch. <laughs> there really is no smell. You guys are paranoid. Look. <laughs> don't see that. There is no smell in the air, I'm telling you. It is so, look. This is how clean the air is. If you unplug your nose, you would see that there's no smell. You know why? Because the wind is being blown that way. And I'm standing here. I smell nothing. The wind's that way. <sighs> Shirt's still white. Lungs are free of smells and fumes. You do it right. See, now it's no longer um, dumping the black tank. We'll push it back in. There's the gray tank, which is the shower water, sink water, and everything. And what's happening is, this whole pipe is now being cleaned. You just have to wait for that. The gray tank takes a bit longer. It takes longer mm -hmm. the black tank. Also, there's more of a suction effect on that bigger three inch pipe. So now it's about dripping away. I'll let it drizzle for a bit more because I wanted to get as empty as possible. Now lastly, what you want to do is called walking the hose. Take the hose, 
the top, you lift it, you lift it like this. Get the rest of the gunk out. Walking the hose, okay? Walking it, see that? Now it's going out of the um, sewer area. You could do an additional wash. I guess I'll show you guys how to do it. Just for this time. So you see that valve there? Mm -hmm. You wanna shut it, give it a close, and then you take the rock, or whatever it is there, mechanism, and weigh it down. Okay? Take this hose out, right here. And that hose the gray valve. Take the hose out. What you could do is this. You can take this and go like this. See how there's that sign that says don't drink? This is why. To rinse your your black pipe like this. See the water coming out? You can do that. So for example, if you only had a single tank in your RV, a shared black and gray tank, you wouldn't have a gray tank to rinse your, your pipe out because you only have one tank. So in that event, you have to rinse your pipe, otherwise it's gonna be due to all of it. But in my case, it doesn't matter because I have already a gray tank, um, which cleaned everything out. But that's a demonstration of how to clean it. My wife's face is still covered in, still covering the face. Well, I'm telling you, there's no smell. I'm telling you right now, there's no smell. So let's see the sewer hose. Very slow. Put it in, very slow. Make sure the last bit doesn't splash on you. Push that in. Cover that up. Take the lid that I took off earlier. Close it. Boom. Make sure your valves are closed. Otherwise, it can be a slow leak. And if there's a slow leak, because you didn't close the valves properly, when you open that lid, it can explode in your face. <laughs> I hear. I've never, done that, I've never done that mistake, so I've never had that problem. But watch, now I'm gonna close it. All right, close it up. Get the right closing. Closed. I'll, do a, I'll be a good person, I'll close this strap. The next person will suffer. Put that there, watch this. Gloves, look at my gloves. You look at my gloves? They're only dirty from here to there, right? You take them off like a surgeon. Like a surgeon, you take it off. And if you look at this, now I have gloves off, which you take and throw away. Now, I'm wearing a white shirt, right? Do you see anything dirty? Any black spots? Anywhere on the shirt? Anything? It means I did it clean. My hands, now that the gloves are off, nothing wet. See that? Pair of clean hands. You probably still don't want to touch your face at this point. You do want to wash your hands which I'll do. If you walk with me over there, you see there's a potable water station. Or in other places, it's called a fresh water station. Go wash your hands there, and you're good to go. I'm gonna go fill water now, and you're gonna follow me. Take your gloves, put them in the garbage, and dump it. So what you could do, is take some soap, stick it on your hands, Go to the clean water area. This is all clean water. Turn on the tap just a slight. It doesn't spray in your face. Put some soap on your hands. Make sure it's nice and clean. And get it all off. And earlier, as you can, as you saw, my hands were pretty clean. So this is just like getting anything that's on my hands off. That would have been very minor. And there you go. Oh, wrong side. Oh my God, wrong <laughs> All right, now I got wet shoes. Anyways, um, there was a request for me to fill water in the fresh water tank and show it on video. I haven't done one because it's pretty easy. And I mentioned that. But anyways, I got more requests for it. So I'm going to show you how to do it right now. All right, so time to move the RV. Unfortunately for me, 
the water fills on the other side because we gotta have to extend the hose. All right, this is where I put the hose. If you have a 28 footer Majestic, 23, 28A in particular, you would have this compartment too. This is where I put the hose. Hopefully, hopefully I have enough room because this is on the opposite side. If I don't have enough room, what I gotta do is drive the RV around and then put this beside the hose. Right here is a full hookup compartment. If you had a water source or a city connection, you would put it here. It wouldn't fill your fresh water tank. It would just go straight through to your pipes, provide pressure, and you would just get everything out of your taps like you would at your home because the city water connection or the water source is powering your pressure. Now, this one right here is what you want to fill when you want to fill your fresh water tank. So here's a hose. Stick one side in here. You can get adapters for this, but I don't bother, I just stick the hose in and then wait. So here we go. So I've got that side in. I'm going to connect this side to the source, which is right here. See how it says potable water? Make sure it says that, because not every source is potable. Especially in Alberta, okay? Take this, screw it into your water source. and then turn on the water. To, to check for water levels, you can look at the water sensor and see it rise up from half, quarter, whatever your sensors are showing to full. I don't do that because I'm old school. I wait until this starts spewing out and then I cat it. Because when it spews out, it's full. But right now, I am driving home. I want to be as light as possible with having everything essentially working. So I'm only going to fill a little bit of water, enough to use the washroom and maybe wash my hands and some dishes. That's it. When you make your tank full, you're gonna have more water, but you're gonna have a harder drive because water is heavy to drive around. So I'm gonna stop it now because I think that's enough water for me. So that is how you fill a fresh water tank in any RV with a fresh water tank. All right, so now I filled the water, I'm taking it out and I'm capping it. Remember to cap this. One of the most common things is people don't cap this and it flies off on the highway. So if you were to have a city connection, full hookup, you want this thing in the front because it acts as a pressure regulator in the front of your hose like this. And if you look at it, yeah, can you see that? It says 40 to 50 PSI, panted. What this does is it controls the pressure of the water source that comes into the RV down to 40 to 50 PSI, which ensures that your pipes don't break. It just screws in like that. And it's interesting because I think it's a reverse thread. Nope, not this one. So there you go. It kind of goes in like that, right? To make it easy, I cap it and I, just, I leave it on my hose. That way um, I don't lose it. But it does slow down your water fill. But if you do this, you won't lose it and you always have it. There was one time we were camping. Okay, we were in the Vancouver Island somewhere. I did a full hookup. I didn't use this PSI regulator. I put it in, turned on the water, and it busted my pipes because the pressure was too strong. Here in Banff, that doesn't happen, but I guess in the Vancouver Islands area, some people have their own water sources that are regulated. So if I had this, that wouldn't have happened. And that was during a road trip. And that wasn't pleasant at all because we had to have a leaky RV during the road trip. So this is a pressure regulator, okay? Always have it on you, always use it. And that's one of your full hookups. Back away. Pack it up and that's it. You know when you pack this away, remember to drain the water out. Look at the bottom. You see? The water still comes out. So make sure that when you pack it away, you pack it away upwards like this. Levitate it. So all the water will get to the bottom. Don't pack it horizontally. Otherwise, you can have water in your pipes. So just make sure all the water goes out as you pack it away. Especially now during the winter season, being so close, you don't want water in this pipe. Otherwise, you'll find by summer, you got a broken sewer, you got a, a broken hose, you gotta buy another one. There you go, you see, a more water. I'll shove it back in here. And then I just go boom. And that's it. I just showed you how to do a full dump of the black tank, gray tank, 
and the fill of your fresh water tank so that you're ready for your tap and trip again. This actually applies for any RV. So as long as you have an RV and you need to do this, this tutorial will be valuable to you. All right, folks, now that I showed you the outside, let's show you the inside of this Majestic 28A. Mind you, I can show you how to use everything, but certain things I can't demonstrate, like the water system, because this is already a winterized RV, meaning all the water is done and I can't use it until next season. That being said, let's hop on to the kitchen. Here's a microwave. I have this RV plugged into my home. You can tell because this microwave is on. If this RV wasn't plugged in, this microwave would not turn on. Nor will any microwave in an RV because it runs on AC power. Everything else pretty much runs on DC power, which is what the battery provides. It's a standard microwave. You just gotta use it, figure it out, and then eat your food. Under here, you have your hood fan, you have your hood light, you got your regular stove with a range, the propane's turned off, so I can't really turn this um, stove on for you to show you. But basically, you turn the, you turn the gas and then you spark it to get the flame on. These flames turn on, and then you can cook. Over here is your kitchen sink. It's pretty big. I have upgraded my faucet, the one with an extension, like your home, so that I can wash my dishes easier. You have your light here. You have an outlet in this corner, and you have an outlet right there to do whatever, whatever you want to do. You got your kitchen compartments for your plates, bowls, whatever you want here. You got another compartment here to put whatever else you want. I have a toaster there. You have another compartment here to put whatever you want. This is where I put my pots and pans. And you have a bunch of slido drawers here, which is where I put like uh, lighter, forks, spoons, things like that, all right? Now, if you head on a bit more, I can show you what this panel does. Mind you, a lot of this panel isn't gonna light up because everything's empty. But in the summer, when you hold this level test, levels test button, what it's gonna do is show you the levels of all your tanks. Right now it's saying that my propane's empty, my fresh water is empty, my black tank is empty, my gray tank is empty, and my battery and the RV is full. Let's go through some terminology. Propane, fresh water. This RV has a fresh water tank like many RVs do. When you turn on the taps, while you're not hooked onto a water system, there's a water pump that's gonna pull water out of this fresh water tank and then out of your taps. The water that comes out of your taps drains into that sink down into a gray tank. Your shower does the same thing. It drains into the gray tank. The sink, in the washroom to wash your hands also great also drains into the gray tank so the gray tanks the gray tank or gray water is your sink water now this black tank here is specifically just the toilet so anything that you put in the toilet goes to the black tank all right fresh water fresh water black tank toilet water gray water all the water from your sinks and shower all right right here is the water pump button you would hear it turn on and that's it right now See, you hear it turning on, but there's basically nothing in the tank, so nothing's gonna happen. You have your generator, which uh, you turn on by holding start, like this. Boom, there we go. Now that generator fired on. Right now, the generator is right underneath us, or right, really close to being underneath us. So we hear it quite a bit. I prefer external generators because you can pick it up, bring it 30 feet away with a cord, and then turn it on. That way, you don't hear all the rumbling as much because it's not right underneath you. Now, to stop this generator, it's the opposite. There's a stop button. You want to hold it for a second, not like a click. Because if you just click it and let go, the generator might just shut off for like a microsecond and just keep going. So let's hold it for a second like this. And then let go. And now it's, it's off. That's all you got to do. All right. This is the water heater. But you can push the button on like this. In the summer, what you're going to hear is a big giant flame. And then um, the hot water tank in the system, which is six gallons, will take about 20 minutes to heat up. And once it's done heating up, 
you're gonna be able to use hot water from the shower taps and the kitchen sink all right now if we switch over to here I want to show you the RV fridge okay if you look here we have an on and off switch which is this for the fridge see that light turning on that lights on on and that says auto right there because it's an automatic mode when you have an automatic mode the fridge itself is going to detect whether the RV is plugged in or not when it's plugged in it'll switch your electricity mode when it's not plugged in it'll turn to propane mode there is a button here to turn automatic off and that forces this fridge into propane mode for example if you are on a circuit that you plugged into that is quite limited on available power if you plug in this fridge into that circuit it's going to maybe draw 400 angel watts and that could trip the circuit so if your circuit is limited on power you can still force it in propane mode and plug in your rv that way you're, you can still use your lights and heater without any problems at nighttime uh, i guess i should show you the inside of the fridge it's pretty standard freezer fridge pretty standard stuff so one thing about these fridges that i like to mention is that when you have it on propane mode which is when you're driving there is an open flame in the system because these fridges heat up ammonia with an open flame in this fridge to create the, the cooling system to cool your your food. So before filling up gas, go to this button here, flick it off. That way the flame turns off, meaning you can go into a gas station and fill gas in peace. And when you exit the gas station, flick it back on and continue your trip. It's pretty simple and to be honest, Likely nothing's going to happen, but there is an open flame and you really should turn it off. That's my point. Okay. okay. If you look here, this is the shower. It's kind of, it's kind of odd because if I step out of the shower, yeah, everyone will see me. What's cool about this RV is this, this washroom door here doubles as a wall. If you look up in the top corner, there's a bit of a notch that it locks into and it creates a bit of privacy for when you want to shower and all that stuff. Um, if you want to step over here and kind of show the inside of the shower, that'd be cool. I want to show you the size of the shower. Now, normally RVs have small showers and it's kind of un uncomfortable to shower in. Fortunately, this 28A has a pretty big shower because I can move. You got your hot and cold hair and a skylight. So if you shower in the daytime, you have light. Nighttime, a bit harder. You got to turn on this light up here. Well, that's okay. I just wanted to kind of give you an idea of the size of the shower. Oops. All right. This over here is a master bedroom, and I'm going to show you how it looks. If you see here, there's a bit of a walk around the side, a little bit of a um, a platform here for you to put things on. There's a big drawer, two of them, to hang your clothes. There is drawers for you to put towels, pants, whatever you want. There's a light up here. A vent here, which you can open. I have max air vents on top of this, so you can really open it when it snows and rains, it doesn't matter. You got some more compartments here for other things. And you got a light switch here. And you have a outlet right here for when you want to plug things in, like charge your phone and stuff like that. One thing I want to note is for the RV audio system, the two rear speakers are right here on top of the people that sleep in the back. When we first got this RV, I didn't know that. And at nighttime, I wanted to listen to some music. What I did was I blasted the music up and I got yelled at by my wife because I didn't realize these two speakers would blast down and piss her off. So one tip to you to save your marriage. When you want to listen to music at nighttime in the RV, go to the stereo system and fade the speakers all the way to the front so these rear speakers turn off so the people in the back can kind of sleep without getting interrupted good tip isn't it okay oh yeah there's windows here too that with a screen and sliding doors right but these are pretty good blackout curtains so it does a good job of keeping the sun out another thing i want to show you was down here in the bottom corner that is a carbon detector. Green is good. No screeching is also good. And actually, I should show you that too right there. 
So that's a, a heat outlet down there. So you have a dedicated heat output for this room, which is good for the winter. One more thing I want to show you before I go is just the washroom. And again, I can't demonstrate the water, but I can show you how it works. So let's head on this way. Okay, here's the light switch. See how this light switch is not turning on? Because that is the master switch. So you see how this light switch is turning on and off? If this is in the middle, this light's not going to turn on regardless of what you do. Because there is a switch here in the bottom that, it's good. there's a switch here in the bottom that allows you to turn this light on without hitting up here. And that's really handy for kids. So if you have kids, try not to get in the habit of using this light and use the switch down here. That way they can reach it without calling you in the middle of the night to turn the light on, alright? Because like, like I said, if you turn it off, the switch is not going to work. You're going to have to give them assistance. So for now, I'll keep it on. You have a mirror, a drawer for your toothbrushes and all that stuff. You have your sink. You have another compartment here. This is where I keep my toilet paper and toilet trees for the RV toilet and all that stuff. You got your outlet here, GFI outlet, and two compartments where you can store things. You got your vent up here and your vent which you can open like that. Uh, this toilet is a por porcelain RV toilet, the medic brand. How you fill the water is up and down to flush. And again, I can't demonstrate it fully because this RV has been winterized. All you gotta know is up to fill, down to flush. Come spring, I will add water back into this RV and do a better tutorial. And that's it for the washroom stuff. So let's turn it off and head to the front. Okay, right here, you have your RV couch, okay? There's only two of the three seat belts pulled out right now, but underneath this, you can get more seat belts, like so, okay? But if you want to turn this sofa bed, I guess it's called, <laughs> into a bed, you lift upwards and you make it straight and push it in. One thing that drives me nuts is when my wife pushes this seat all the way back like this because it pushes pressure towards the sofa bed and when you want to bring it up it's really hard you can't okay so one thing to note is if you're going to make this into a bed push this seat the passenger seat a little bit further back that way it doesn't interfere with the hinge process you mean okay. further forward so this is also a bed okay i just showed you how to do the sofa bed part this is the dinette conversion part if you look here you'll see two latches. If you have children, you're going to be familiar with this because cars have it too. If your kids are at the front facing seat level, which is usually five year old and up, then you're going to be able to uh, fit them into this space you have here pretty easy. But if you have a rear facing seat, which is usually newborns, you're likely not going to be able to fit your rear facing car seat in here. So what you're going to do is lower this table while you drive and have everyone keep their feet up in a cross motion. It is what it is when you have a newborn, but you can still do it, which is what I'm trying to say. You just gotta make sure it works. So the next step here is that we have to make this table go down here so that we can convert this into a bed. The first step to do this is to put these cushions somewhere. But what I like to do is just make them vertical like this, out of the way. Because when they're vertical upwards like this, they're really out of the way. So I'll put both of them like that. And then I'll proceed to putting this down. So usually, it's pretty easy to lift up unless someone sits, sits on this table and really forces it into its socket. So right now, there we go, it's up. And this one, so that came up pretty easy. But often, these things get stuck in pretty hard. So when you pull this up, Make sure your face is not here, okay? Because it'll hit you in the face pretty hard. So you want to pull it up like this until it hits the table. There is a compartment here on the side where you can put this far in like this at night time so no one steps on it and falls in their head. This table is held on by an L bracket. It's like an L shape that so requires you to lift it up 45 degrees and then bring it down to the bridge like this. Once it's done, Put these 
cushions like so together and form a bed like that. And then when you're done sleeping and all that stuff, you have to reverse the whole process back to its original form. So again, I put them vertical because I believe that's the best way to do it. Instead of putting it here and all that stuff, you bring this back up, 45 degree angle to latch it. And while it's like this, it's probably a good idea to take this pole out first, but the compartment isn't so far away from you. You can pull it out, put it back in the socket, and bring it down. Close the compartment, put these cushions back in place, and you are good to go. One thing I want to note is there's no seat belts here pulled out right now, but they're all hidden in the back. Like so. So normally you would put them out like this, and let them hang like this, and then buckle it together for your passengers. Under the dinette, there's a circuit breaker right here. If you open the circuit breaker, you'll see one that resembles your home. So for example, if you're blow drying your hair and boiling water with the same outlet, this is going to trip. It's going to require you to open this and flick the breakers in order for it to work again. So blinking is like this, windshield washer is like this, to have the fluid spray onto your dash, and this is to control the speed of your wipers. It's pretty simple. Fan, CD player, power locks, power windows. The rest is pretty standard if you have been driving for a while. So this part I'm not going to explain too much. So when you drive, you can see the back tires with this side mirror here. When you drive, you want to drive with your rear tires, meaning when you do a turn, you want to be wide enough so that when you hit the turn apex, your rear tires are not going to go into a ditch. You want to make sure when you turn, you're looking and those tires clear the turn without you falling in the ditch, otherwise you're in trouble. That mirror is very important and as long as you drive slow, you're not going to have any problems. Speaking of driving slow, it's important to drive slow. On the highways, you want to keep at 100, 105, 110 max because you'll find that these degrade a lot in handling once you hit those speeds. Kilometers, yes. When we're in Canada, so we go by kilometer. When you're driving on the highway, you want to go 105 to 110 kilometers max because these RVs lose handling significantly once you hit high speeds because they're so heavy and they're so big that it catches the wind a lot like a big sail on a boat. So I recommend 100 to 110 as a standard for driving these vehicles. And when you're driving in smaller roads, let's say 40 kilometers on the speed limit, you might actually go slower because some of these smaller roads have really tight turns. And if you take it at 40 kilometers, you're not gonna do well. Just keep in mind that these signs on the road are for regular cars, not you when you're driving a big RV. When you're driving a big RV, you want to drive whatever you feel comfortable with because no one's going to fault you for driving slow in an RV in the slow lane. They're likely just going to pass you. They might get mad at you, but what are you going to do? Risk your life so that the guy behind you is happy? No, you're going to drive your pace. You're going to drive what's comfortable and what's within the limits of the RV. One thing to note is that RVs are not made in Canada. So if you look at the speedometer, the top big numbers are going to be miles and the tiny ones are going to be kilometers. Because we're in Canada, you want to go by kilometers, otherwise you're going to be going 60 in a 60 zone and get pulled over by a cop for going 100 kilometers. You get a big ticket, all right, or suspension. So mind you, kilometers is what you want in Canada. Always take it slow, relax, and you'll be fine. All right, folks, I hope you enjoyed that video on how to dump and refill your fresh water on any RV. This RV in particular is a Majestic 28A. So if you have that model, this is an exact instruction set for your RV. But this applies for any RV because this is pretty much a universal system that every RV uses. If you need to dump an RV, this is the video for you to watch. My name is Han from the Best Family Outdoor Show. I'll see you next time. Peace out.